Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This video here is gonna be a fun one because it's a tool release. So this is my new tool called Gugnir, and it has a backstory that we will get to, but I'm gonna start the video by saying it's not perfect. It is just one person's passion project. I'm an average Go developer. Feel free to drop issues, pull requests, whatever. I'll look them over, we can talk about it, and we can uh, get everybody involved that wants to be involved. But let's go over the tool here quick and I'll show you kind of what it does and, and how to start with it and why I built it and that'll be the video. So again, this tool is based off of a spear in North Mythology. I am doing it this way because I kind of have a weird kick of naming all my tools, the new stuff that I make both internally and that I'll probably release after some kind of like mythology. So this one I went with Norse because I like Norse mythology. So Gungnir is a spear of the god Odin and it's always known for hitting the target of the attacker regardless of the attacker's skill. So this has nothing to do with uh, any type of skill or technique um, and it's always gonna hit the target. So it's, again, I thought it was clever. So that's what we're going with, with the name. All it is, is it's very similar to a tool that used to be around and still has a repo called CertStream. I don't believe it's maintained or it's like up anymore, at least the back end for it. So this is basically a really similar thing, but it's just a simple command line tool that just prints it to standard out. So it's a command line tool that parses certificate transparency logs for newly issued certificates. You can use this on pen tests, you can use this on red team, you can use it for bug bounty, whatever you want it to be. All it does is watch all of the CT logs and whenever a new certificate is detected, it will extract the domains from either the CN field or the SAN field. And it will just take all those domains and put them to standard out if they match the domains that you're filtering, which we'll get to later. So you just start this in your command line, you run it, and anything that matches the filter you give it, it just prints to standard out. So you can pipe this into DNSX, HTTPX, like that kind of stuff. You can anew it to the domains you already have and then pipe that into notify. And then that way you can you know set up notifications for new domains that way. Basically just continuously running, printing to standard out, really basic like Unix philosophy type tool. So the key features we're really going for is it's actively monitoring all of the CT logs for any newly issued, issued certificates. So it's not the ones that are old, it's just the new ones. And then anything that does come on that's new, that matches the filter, it will extract the domain and, and give you that domain from either the CN field or the SAN fields. It's continuous, which I already went over. And again, the custom filtering is because if you don't give it anything to filter and you just say, give me all of it, you get a lot, a lot, a lot of trash. It's just a lot of like random stuff that gets posted. It's a lot of like Zendesk stuff. It's a lot of like 0365 domains. It's a lot of stuff like that, which I'm not necessarily interested in. And that's kind of not why I made the tool. So you always give the tool a text file and the text file is just line by line names of root domains that you want it to filter for. So if you only want, if you're only interested in one domain, you can do it just the one. If you're interested in thousands and thousands of domains, you can give it that. And that's what it will do. So that's what you see here in the usage. It's, it's you install it the same way as every other Go tool, at least that I've run into that people have made and that I've made. Um, and then again, you just give it your roots.txt file. Again, it's just a text file of stuff that you would you know, see in other bug bounty tools, it'll start, it'll initialize, and it'll print out, you know, all the logs that it's going to be monitoring, and then just standard out domains, and it just runs until you control C it or anything like that. And this is just license and warranty and stuff like that. So it's very basic, very small, very lightweight. You, you literally can put it on a little teeny, teeny, tiny box. It does not shoot out a ton of traffic because it only checks the logs every so many seconds or whatever, and you're not like scanning the internet with this or anything. So you can put it on like the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest VPS and just have it run forever. I mean, it, it, it's up to you. So all you have to do here is again, and the code's over here on the side, but if you were to install it without the code, all you would do is just run the go install, which I've obviously already done, so it'll just happen. Uh, if you try and run it alone, obviously it'll say you have to run with a roots.txt file. It obviously doesn't have to be called root.txt, so you can call whatever you want. But if you run it, I have a target, uh, a targets file here that looks like this that I pulled from Project Discovery's chaos list. And this is just all the wildcard domains that have a public bug bounty program, at least according to chaos. So there's like 15 of these, I believe. Let's see. We go back down here and word count targets. Yeah, so there's about 1,500, almost 1,600 here. 
And these are just all root domains. So anything that lands outside of these domains or any subdomains that land outside these root domains will get printed to me in standard output. Now, one thing I would be very wary of is some of these targets like Zoom is one that's right in front of your face. Zendesk is on there. There's a couple other ones that are like providers like Yahoo Cloud might be a provider. A lot of the domains that come up probably are them, you know, providing cloud services or providing domains to other companies and it's not actually in scope for their bug bounty program so look over all that stuff before you just throw in a bunch of these domains and just like go like this i would maybe check a few but either way you can put in whatever domains you want here i'm just saying you'll get a lot of trash like for instance if you want to try it with zendesk go ahead and you'll see just how many zendesk domains just for random people get spun up every day it's kind of ridiculous but so when you take a targets.txt file like this all you would do is you would do this and you'd put in targets.txt and it would run it will get initialized. So when this initializes, you'll see that it prints all of the logs that it was able to connect to and that it starts monitoring. That is just so obviously you can see and you can count if you really want to how many come out. It's more of like a debugging thing. Then after that, it will just sit in limbo and nothing will print to standard out and it'll just run, and it'll just cook until something shows up on CT logs that match, you know, that's a domain that matches one of your root domains. So here, You'll see like it's starting continuous scans for all these logs. This is the ones that it could find uh, a 200 connection for from the master log list. And then it just sits here. And now it's just continuously scanning all of these log lists for domains. And when one shows up, you would get it. So we tested this on my last stream. If you wanna go to my Twitch channel and check the last VOD, at least from the date that this video releases, we did it against, I think, Epic Games and like Cisco.com, and it found a Cisco.com domain while we were streaming that Subfinder actually didn't find. So I'm just gonna stop it for now for the sake of this demo, but the reason why I made this tool is because there's a lot of other places that do this. I know like Security Trials, and I'm sure Netlist does too, grab this data, but the biggest one that everyone knows, the household name is cert.sh. So cert.sh, this is literally the data that goes into cert.sh, is the CT logs get ingested into cert.sh. The thing is though, is by the time it gets into cert.sh and then gets into their database, gets into their API and is called by either your script or subfinder and then your script is longer and longer and longer, right? So if you are one of those people that wants to hit a new domain the second it goes live, like literally within minutes, this beats cert.sh. So I have found domains using this tool that Subfinder will have when you run Subfinder on it. It just won't have it till maybe four hours later, a day later, the results kind of vary, right? Because sooner or later it gets into these tools, it gets into cert.sh, like these are, this is a public data source. So obviously everyone is pulling from it as well, internally, security trails, netlists, you know, I'm sure other sources. And those are all sources that like a Subfinder will call their API. But by the time they ingest it, they either use it or comb through it for their own stuff and then give it out to you, it could be anywhere from hours to a day or whatever until you see it. So I don't think I've seen more than like a day or two um, from when I start seeing it in Subfinder scans. But this basically just, if you are considering yourself like competing with someone who let's say is running Subfinder every day, this is a way to find stuff before they do. It's one of those ways to be continuously scanning or continuously checking, because you're not really scanning the internet or anything, but you're continuously ingesting new domains and you're filtering them against domains you care about. And when one shows up, you will know about it almost immediately, like pretty much within 30 seconds or a minute of it hitting a CT log, you would probably know about it and then you're off to the races. So that's what this tool is for. Again, cert.sh is kind of a pain to query, even if it's through Subfinder, it doesn't always work. And again, there's clips of that on my Twitch too of me showing why, but cert.sh is kind of finicky to query, whether it's DB or API. So this means that you don't have to do that because you have basically continuous data that they're getting at the same time. So again, just something, a tool that I use that I'm gonna release to you guys to use for your own gain, um, to stay up to date. If this is something you're interested in, uh, it's one of those things. If you're into recon and you're into finding new assets and finding fresh assets the second they hit the internet, um, again, will it be a good asset to hack or will it be a, like a 
you know, full of bugs or anything. Like, who knows? Because they're new, they're fresh. Um, and sometimes they're not new and they're fresh. Sometimes it's just people refreshing certs or re-putting a site live that was live last week. They're not always fresh. Something that pops up isn't always going to be brand new. But there is stuff out there that's brand new. And this is a way to catch it first. So... I will drop the link in the description, obviously, because my screen is a little small, but it's going to be in my golden CyberSec repo that I've put all the other tools I've released in. And again, you don't, you can just install it. All you have to do is get go on a box and then you install it. Once you get go on your box and get your go path set up, like using any other go tools, you can just go install it and it'll just be a binary in your machine. You can use it and you're off to the races again just create a roots.txt file of the domains you want to monitor and it'll run forever if you do have issues put in an issue request put in a pr if you think there's something cool that you should add all that kind of stuff hit me up on twitter or in my discord or in any of the other discords i hang out in and we can talk about the tool show me cool ideas whatever it is i'm just putting this out there for you guys it's something i've been using for the past couple weeks and i've found like really interesting things with so it would be really cool if you guys do find something with this. It's more motivating for me to hear about everyone else's success as well. So if you find a cool domain, obviously don't, you know, don't have to tell me what you found on the domain. If you did get a bounty or it helped in an engagement or whatever, but ping me on Twitter or ping me in discord or something and let me know that this tool helped. So I know that this kind of stuff putting out to you guys is worth it and getting some of the stuff public is worth it for you guys and for me and for everything else. But again, the tool will be in the description. Use it. Let me know what you think. That's all I got. Have fun.